So the pressing question for today is, how does helium make your voice sound so ridiculous? To demonstrate, here's the chorus of an old Italian song, but sung on air first, for comparison. Stand from the day, O Sole, O Sole mio, stand from the day, stand from the day. Now here's the same song sung on helium. Manna tu sole che bello ne O sole mio stand from the day O sole o sole mio stand from the day Stand from the day. I'm going to inhale a bunch of helium and we'll see if we can figure this out scientifically. If you ask the internet why helium makes your voice sound higher, you'll get a couple of different explanations. We'll call the first hypothesis one, and that is basically that your vocal cords flap faster in a higher gas, thereby producing a higher pitch. The second explanation, which we'll call hypothesis 2, has to do with the speed of sound in helium. Because helium atoms are lighter than the atoms that make up air, sound travels faster through it. The speed of sound in air varies according to temperature, pressure, and humidity, but we'll use Google's value of 767 miles per hour. If a sound wave is faster, a sound wave of a certain frequency, or pitch, will be longer. In air, A440, or this pitch right here, is produced by a sound wave that's about 30 inches long. In helium, the same pitch would be produced by a wave 90 inches long. If we use this 30 inch tube as a resonating chamber using helium gas, the pitch that will resonate in it will be three times higher than it would be if we were using air according to hypothesis 2. Your vocal apparatus acts as a resonant chamber and gives your voice its distinctive sound. When you sing, your vocal cords produce one main pitch, but other notes are also produced. The shape of your vocal apparatus determines which pitches get amplified. So according to hypothesis 2, helium makes your voice sound higher because the pitches that are amplified by your vocal tract are three times higher than the pitches that are amplified in air. If hypothesis 1 is correct, then when I sing with helium, the main pitch produced by my vocal cords should be higher. So I should be able to sing soprano, alto, maybe, maybe only tenor. I'm a baritone in air. If hypothesis 2 is correct, my vocal cords may flap at the same rate on helium as in air. In other words, I may not be able to sing higher or lower than normal, but the timbre or sound in my voice will be higher because the sounds that are amplified by the resonant chamber of my vocal apparatus are three times higher than normal. The highest note I've ever been able to sing in a performance without switching over to falsetto was the A-flat above middle C from the song One Day More in the musical Les Miserables. Here's what it sounds like in air. One more day before the storm At the barricades of freedom When our ranks begin to form Will you take your place with me? So as I suspected, I just barely got the A flat. Now I'll fill my lungs with helium and sing it again. One more day before the storm. 
the storm at the barricades of freedom. <laughs> when our ranks begin to form, will you take your place? Here's another test to see if I can sing any higher. One more day before the storm. So I can't even sing one note higher on helium than in air. Just starting off, it looks like hypothesis one is not doing very well. Now let's test the two hypotheses using my low range. The lowest note in the same musical is sung by Javert and it's two Fs below middle C. It also happens to be the lowest note that I can sing with any resonance. If hypothesis one is correct, I should be able to sing it in the air, but not on helium. This is what it sounds like with air. La Jean, at last, we see each other plain. Monsieur le maire, you'll wear a different chain. And here's what it sounds like on helium. La Jean, at last, we see each other plain. <laughs> Monsieur le maire, you'll wear a different chain. So I can still sing the F. It sounds funny, but I sang it. We can see from these two tests that the fundamental pitch of my voice was not altered by the helium, so we have to reject hypothesis one. There's one more test we can do before we accept hypothesis two. And there you have it. Hypothesis 2 is pretty well confirmed. <laughs> to see where helium comes from, click here. To see some chemistry demonstrations, click here. And to see something completely random, click here.